Yo, what is up, doggies? It's your boy Beanie Colum back at it with another banging video. And today, I'm gonna be hitting y'all with another story time video. Now, I know I put up a poll asking what kind of videos you guys wanted to see out of me, and you know, story time did not end up winning that poll, but. I'm in the mood of sharing one of my wild and wacky stories, and I mean, if you guys are interested in hearing some wild and wacky stories, you guys are in just the right place. Now, straight up, no exaggeration, this is probably my wildest and wackiest story. I feel like I say that a lot to hype up my story, saying this one's like really wild and wacky, but like, this one actually is my best story. Like, I've been saving this one. And while this is one of my best stories, it definitely was not a good night. The whole night I was tweaking out, but you know, those usually make for the best stories. Before I get into this, I would also like to say I do not recommend anyone tries anything that I did in this video. I mean, after hearing this story, I highly doubt this is going to encourage you to do any drug use, but just saying, do not try any drugs. I do not endorse them. I'm just sharing this story because it's funny as hell. Alright, but let's just hop right into this story. So, it was my junior year of high school. In my junior year of high school, I was going through a bit of a psychedelic phase, you know, it happens to the best of us. You're trying to find yourself, you find these drugs that expand your mind, and you just get a little lost in them. And while psychedelics might have the ability to quote-unquote expand your mind and make you see things from a different perspective, it also has the ability to just completely tweak you out, and that's exactly what happened to me in this story. Alright, but to set the scene, you know, my junior year, as I said, tripping a lot of sack. Earlier that year, I had bought 20 tabs of acid and at this point I was on to the final tab and this being my last tab of acid I wanted to do something special with it I didn't want to just take it in my room and watch a bunch of trippy YouTube videos and lucky for me an opportunity arise for some fun shenanigans to do with this acid my parents had told me that the whole family is going out of town for the weekend for for like a wedding or shit I, I don't really remember it doesn't matter what matters is I had the whole house to myself and a tab of acid now my planning for this trip didn't go much further than thinking you know I got the whole crib to myself I'm just gonna invite the dogs over smoke a bunch of weed and drop some acid and that would end up hurting me in the end as you'll see. So I remember right when my family left, I obviously invited the dogs over and copped a quarter ounce of that Mary Jane. So obviously we started rolling some blunts and you know, we're all having a good time and I remember I'm very excited for the day I'm about to have. Like it was just very rare for my parents to you know, leave for like multiple days and for me to just have the whole house to myself. Like th this was a rare occurrence for me. You know, I'm enjoying this freedom of you know, not having my parents home and just doing whatever I want. But this whole time it's just in my mind that I really want to drop this acid. Like, nearly every other time I tripped, it would be when my parents were in the room sleeping, and you know, it would always just fuck up the vibe a little bit, so I, I was just so excited to have this good vibe for my final trip. The only thing stopping me from dropping the acid right there and then is I knew my parents were probably gonna call or text me at some point at the night, and you know, I didn't want to be tripping sack when they did. So initially, I was gonna wait for my parents to call me, and then I was gonna trip the acid, but... It was just taking way too long. I remember I waited till like around 6 o'clock and I was just getting way too impatient. And I just really wanted a trip. So, you know, I thought to myself, I'll just power off my phone and that way I just won't have to worry about anything that happens. So that's what I decided to do. And I remember at this time, I obviously tell the dogs that, you know, I'm about to drop some acid and power off my phone. And, you know, at the time, I only had the closed dogs over. So, like, I was really excited to be tripping around them. You know, I thought I was about to have a great time. And I remember I specifically said to my friends, like, I don't want to have too many people over tonight because, you know, I like this, like, small vibe, you know, especially when I'm tripping. I'm not going to want to be around a bunch of people that I'm not that close with. And at the time, all the dogs seemed to understand. They're like, yeah, we get you. You don't want to have too many people here. It'll be fine. You know, in my head, everything will be fine. So I dropped the acid and I powered off my phone. So while waiting for the acid to kick in, I remember we're just smoking a bunch more. And at the time, we're smoking in the garage. We all got lawn chairs. We got like four lawn chairs set up. We're all just chilling. Got a nice chill roto going. And I don't really even remember all the people that were at my house at this time. But I do remember there was just constantly talk of more people wanting to come over. And like I was really just trying to hang out with my close friends. And you know, I'd end up telling my friends this. And they'll be like, well, then such and such isn't a close friend. And you know, I'd be like, well, I mean, he kind of is. And they'll be like, all right, then let him over. And... You know, basically, I just got talked into letting a bunch more people over. And I end up having like six or seven other people in my house, and all of them are like people who I would consider close friends, but it was just a lot of people, and you know, that wasn't exactly what I wanted. And by the time the acid kicked in, I was already very overwhelmed just having all these people in my house just talking about all this random shit. Like, it was just too much for me. I just couldn't handle it. But you know, I was trying to keep my cool, you know, I was just laying back in my chair being very quiet, basically just analyzing each and every person. I don't know, I was kind of tweaking out a bit, but I remember at the time it wasn't too bad, I was still just trying to get used to the situation I put myself in, you know, all these people. And I remember playing some like Nintendo Switch, like some Super Smash Brothers or something, and I remember that was pretty fun. 
But I remember at some point, one of my close friends asked me if like four other people could pull up and most of them were like underclassmen I barely knew or just people that I didn't really fuck with that much. And you know, I instantly told my friend, no, I, I do not want these people to come over. But my friend responds back like, come on, dude, they really want to come over. There's no reason, you know, they shouldn't like, what do you not fuck with them or something? And then some of my other friends in my house also add in be like, yeah, what do you not like this kid? Or like, what do you have against him? And everyone in my house just really wanted me to invite these other people over. And I was just like, fuck it. Why not? You know, I'll do it. Even if I don't particularly like these people, I'm sure it won't be that bad. But oh boy, was I wrong. L let me just explain some of the characters that I invited over to my house. Now this first kid unironically goes by the kid and that's not a nickname that other people gave to him that's a nickname that he gave to himself he said hey guys can you please start calling me the kid like I think that sums up this kid enough anyone who gives themselves the nickname the kid like you know they're an absolute cornball this other kid in my house I'm just gonna call the rock monster from Fantastic Four because when he was at my house that's literally what I thought he was a good description of this kid is like think of that stereotypical fat redhead bully kid from like movies and TV shows like that's literally who this kid was. On top of that, I was like best friends with this kid in like third and fourth grade and then I just like never talked to him again and this was like the first time I've seen him in so long and he was just at my house when I was tripping sack so pretty bad vibe. So this fucking rock monster from Fantastic Four also pulled up to my house with the McDonald's family box and the dog did not share a single fry bro. This dog ate all four cheeseburgers, all four medium fries. He ate the whole thing. And then also there were just two underclassmen at my house that I just didn't know that well. One of them I would describe as just the epitome of cool. Like I remember talking to this man I was just like god damn this dog is so fucking suave. Like I remember talking to this kid and he was just talking so like smooth and like everything he said just seemed so cool and I just in my head I was like this guy is just the ultimate Chad so you know at this moment there's a lot of characters in my house you know some of them I like some of them I don't like but regardless it's just a lot of shit going on and it's and it was definitely tripping with my head like I remember I was just very much in my head like I just had like a thousand thoughts per second I was just really thinking and I remember when I was doing this I would start like fidgeting with stuff on my face or like start grabbing at my face or like picking at my lips just like while I was thinking like it would just help me think about stuff and I I remember at some point we're rolling up some more blunts to go smoke some more and you know while we're doing this you know I'm really in my head you know still just thinking a lot I'm grabbing at my lips and while I was picking at my lips I guess I was just going way too hard because I end up picking my lips so hard that it starts bleeding and I don't even know that I've done this but everyone looks over at me and like just starts laughing and I remember just being so confused and then I remember one person saying like oh he doesn't even know what happened and that just makes them all start laughing even harder and it makes me start freaking out because I'm like what did just happen what's going on and you know someone eventually ends up telling me you ripped your lip and you know this obviously tripped me out pretty hard because I was like god damn how did I just rip open my lip without me even knowing and you know I was also pretty embarrassed but you know I ended up grabbing a paper towel and just holding it against my lip and you know it ended up just drying up and it really wasn't that bad and you know in my head you know I was happy that it had stopped bleeding within like five minutes like it really wasn't even that big of an issue and by the time my lip had stopped bleeding we had just so happened finished rolling the blunts but right before we were about to go smoke these blunts one of these fuckers at my house had the audacity to say we cannot let this dude be in smoke on these blunts because his lips are all fucked up i don't even remember which dog said this shit but whoever it was like fuck you man but you're gonna say that shit at my house with my weed in the blunts like, like who the fuck do you think you are now at the time i was not trying to start any beefs i was just way too on my head about this acid but i also wanted to smoke these blunts so you know i went over to the mirror i looked at my lip and admittedly it did look pretty gross there was just like dried blood all over my lip and it, it just didn't look appealing so I thought it would be a great idea to, you know, start picking at my lips again and maybe just pick off all this gross shit on my lips and then I'll be fine. So there I go picking at my lips once again, somehow forgetting the lesson I had just learned about how I should not pick at my lips. And well, I ended up ripping open my lip a second time. And this time when I did it, for some reason, instantly in my head, I just thought, okay, well this time I permanently fucked up my lip. I stumbled out of the bathroom, just like freaking out into the room where all the other dogs were. And you know, they get to all witness this again and have another good laugh. And while they're all laughing at me, I'm like genuinely just freaking out. Like I think I just permanently fucked up my lip. And I remember I'm like asking like, is my lip fucked? is my lip fucked and then the one dog who i described is just like the ultimate chad i remember just like looking deep into his eyes bro and he was just like nah dog you're fine 
He was like, I I've ripped my lip a couple times here and there, you know, it just ends up healing back in a couple days. It sucks, but you know, you'll get over it. And I just really needed that response from someone that was sober that understood that, you know, my lip was actually fine and that, you know, I was gonna be okay. So after hearing this, I realized I'm fine. I just put another paper towel on my lip and let that shit heal again. But even after getting through ripping over my lip two times, I get back to the realization that these fuckers still don't want to let me hit this blunt. What the dogs ended up deciding to do was just not include me in the roto and then just give me the two roaches from the blunts we had rolled up and I would end up just smoking whatever they left me. And like this is what we ended up doing and sure, you know, I did end up getting to smoke and you know, everything kind of worked, but it was just the saddest, most disrespectful smoke sesh I have ever been a part of. I really sit here watch these fuckers smoke the whole beginning of these two blunts and these fuckers hand me their scum roaches once they're done smoking and all just left didn't even wait and watch me smoke the roaches just instantly got up and get the fuck out of my house i remember literally watching them all leave and just in my head thinking that they were gonna all come right back like them leaving just felt so abrupt like it just it was just so weird i was like no way they're actually gone but those fuckers were gone and it was probably for the best. Although these dogs made sure to leave me with shit all over my house. I had like 10 lawn chairs out in my garage that I had to put away. The rock monster from Fantastic Four left a whole ass family meal McDonald's box scattered across my basement. And on top of that, I just had weed just all over my couch and just all over everything. Cleaning up all the shit probably took me around like an hour, but honestly, I had a decently good time cleaning up because like, I, I don't know, it was just kind of fun. Tripping acid will tend to make any activity, you know, kind of wild and rowdy. And you know, I also just did feel kind of accomplished once I finally finished cleaning up and I had big plans for what I was about to do. I forgot to mention back when I had the dogs over, I did end up also copying two edibles off of the kid. Just when I had finished cleaning, I already knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to eat these two edibles and take a shower with the speaker banging music. I was pumped up for this shower. I started nibbling on these edibles and I power on my phone. And this was the first time of me turning on my phone since I had powered it off from when I dropped the acid. And what do you know, when I turn on my phone, I have like 300 messages from both my parents asking where am I, what am I doing, why am I not answering their calls, and like I swear 300 might not even be an exaggeration, like my mom went hard, like it was actually like 100 plus messages, she literally messaged me on Snapchat and Instagram, like on every single service she could think of, and you know me tripping sack, I'm reading through all these messages like just thinking holy fuck this is so bad, this is so fucked, like I just keep staring at this number like 100 missed calls or whatever the fuck it was, I'm like how is that even possible, and you know this obviously sends me on some wild thought loops on what the fuck am I supposed to do in this situation you know like am I gonna get in trouble or do they know that I'm tripping ass it's just about all this shit and it is kind of funny because before I turned off my phone you know my thought process was you know I'm just gonna turn off my phone and act like my phone's dead and you know if my parents call me I'll just tell them my phone died but now that I was tripping acid my thought process was just all discombobulated like I knew the game plan was just tell them that my phone was dead but for some reason I just couldn't stop thinking about it just having thought loops just like am I gonna be okay are they gonna believe that it's dead is this gonna even work at some point of me getting stalked in these thought loops, I just think, fuck it, I'll just hop in the shower and maybe that'll help me forget about this situation. So I end up getting into the shower and bringing the remainder of my two edibles with me, and ironically, I never even turned on my speaker and music. And my tripped out ass ends up eating these two edibles whilst I'm in the shower, and the edibles that I got were like vanilla cake edibles, so like when I was eating in the shower, it just got all wet and soggy, and I ended up just like drinking this cake water, like it, it was some nasty shit, I don't know what I was doing. But for some reason at the time, Time, it really didn't seem that nasty to me to just end up drinking these edibles as like this sludge for some reason I was kind of fucking with it but eating these edibles while still in this thought loop of you know what the fuck am I gonna do when my parents really mad at me probably was not the best idea but I get out of the shower with both these edibles down and I'm just tripping out on what the fuck I'm supposed to do at this point I remember like literally pacing back and forth just trying to like figure out what I'm supposed to do how I can avoid getting in trouble and I remember I even like called one of my friends and I called my friend up like very panicked just explaining the situation on how my parents called me and how I don't know what to do. And you know my friend was pretty simply telling me yo you can just tell them that your phone died that seems like that'll probably work. But you know me tripping out I just could not possibly comprehend like what was going on. I was just way too confused and I just couldn't get out of these thought loops. So it dawns on me at some point that I just gotta find a distraction you know something that will get this off my mind. So I go over into my family room and I just queue up Netflix and you know I just start looking at what they have. And you know looking through the Netflix catalog to find Find something to watch while you're tripping is usually quite the adventure you know I was really locked in trying to find the perfect movie slash TV 
TV show to watch. And while scrolling through the catalog, I found a little movie called The Yes Man starring Jim Carrey, and holy fuck was this movie fire. Now, I went into this movie with horrible thought loops of how I'm about to get in trouble, how my parents might know that I'm tripping ass, and just all this terrible shit. But I turn on this movie, and literally, like, the second I see the goat himself, Jim Carrey, just doing all these wacky facial expressions, doing all this overacting, I just kind of knew everything was going to be okay. Now, like, I don't want to say Jim Carrey completely saved me off of these bad vibes, but... Just the more and more I'd see Jim Carrey, the more my thoughts would change from, you know, all this negative shit to this shit like, holy fuck, Jim Carrey's just the fucking GOAT. Like, look at this fool Jim Carrey. This dude Jim Carrey's faces are so funny. Like, I was just on those positive vibes. And that one scene where Jim Carrey starts singing Step Away From That Ledge, my friend, like, oh my god, was that shit hype, bro. I was feeling this movie. It really just saved everything. I'd heavily recommend tuning on some Jim Carrey movies when you're tripping sack. Like, it's just a great experience. Like, the facial expressions he makes are just, like, times 10. Like, I, I don't know. It it's a great time. So after I finish the movie, it's, like, 5 or 6 a.m., and at this point, I'm really not even tripping that hard anymore, and I just remember I just ended up watching TV or YouTube and just fell asleep. The next day, I decided to, you know, call back my parents, and, you know, I told them my phone died, and, you know, I just wasn't by a charger because I was on the couch, and... You know, they kind of believed me. They thought I was definitely probably up to something, but I, I didn't really get in any trouble. And, you know, it's like I said, the whole time I kind of knew I wasn't going to get in trouble. Like, I powered off my phone so I could have that excuse to say, but when you're tripping sack, all logic really just goes out the window. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this story, and if there's any lesson you can take out of this, it's definitely you gotta have a good set and setting for your trip. This is like what literally everyone says in the psychedelic community, like this is how you have a good trip, but you know, it's not always as simple as, you know, just thinking you have a good set and setting, because in my head, you know, open house with a bunch of weed and all the dogs over sounds like one of the best set and settings you could possibly have, but shit does not always go the way you expect, especially when you're tripping out, because shit tends to usually get a little bit more wacky. And if you like this video, please drop a like, comment, subscribe, you know all that good shit and if you really like this video you just really like my videos please join my discord it's always fun just chatting with you guys but yeah that's all i got for this video and as always peace out doggies